The Vault is brought to you by Saltire Energy, who continue to lead the way in the oil industry when it comes to specialist equipment rental. By Lux Scott, a jet class luxury vehicle company. Look out early in the new year for some very special offers in collaboration with P&J Live. By Fowler McKenzie, an industry leader when it comes to all your roofing and cladding needs, established back in 2001. And by HCS, a Scottish organisation focused on delivering the best IW OCS solutions, bespoke controls equipment and supporting services to the oil and gas industry. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to episode 6 of The Vault. If you are watching for the very first time, hi, how are you doing? A very warm welcome to the Ali Beg ABTV studio. So The Vault, what's this all about? Well, it's very simple. I come up with a new idea and a new concept. So back during the pandemic, I conducted a host of Zoom interviews with a number of ex-Aberdeen players and I transcribed them, and then I placed them on what was my old written blog page. Well, I decided during the World Cup to take the majority of these interviews, re-edit them, repackage them, put some fancy artwork around them, and now bring them to you as video presentations. And what I like about this is that, obviously with the written blogs, you don't really get to see the emotions so when you see the subject matter right in front of you, you can feel the emotion when they have to answer a certain question that I ask them. And when they reminisce about their time at Aberdeen Football Club, both the good and the bad. So I really hope you enjoy today's watch with former Aberdeen midfielder David Rowson. David is a local boy who supported the club as a youngster. He realised his dream of playing for his boyhood club when he signed for the Dons on the 5th of October 1994. He played 156 games for the club, scoring 12 goals. I began our chat by asking him to explain the process which saw him scouted by Aberdeen Football Club. So my, my kind of route into Aberdeen was probably a little bit different to some of the players that I was playing with at the time. I was playing with a, a team called B-Side and, and majority of, of those players were either signed up by Dundee United or Aberdeen or Celtic or Rangers. They had you know, S, signed S-forms. It was the same with the next team that I played with, um, Stony Wood. And all of those kind of players were all, you know, tapped up at the time. And But for me, it was, I went through the Aberdeen schools. Mm -hmm. So from the academy, um, we went on trials. We got into the Scottish schools and stuff like that. And Aberdeen schools um, select team, they trained at Pataudry on a, on a Thursday night on the Ash, just at Ash Car Park, just outside. Um, and we were getting trained by Neil Cooper and Drew Jarvie. And it was it was it was brilliant. Um, and then after a while, um, I just remember I think it was Drew and Neil Cooper came around to my house, spoke to mum and dad, and then said, Look, we want to sign you in an S1. Mm. From then, um it was a case of, right, my mum and dad just basically said, look, stay on, uh, do a hire at um, our fifth year, a couple of hires, um, and then you can sign. Uh, and I signed when I, after fifth year, when I was about 17. Um, so, yeah, it was it was around about that time. So, 16, I signed an S form. Um, and then they, they, they offered me a contract a YTS contract, uh, and that was, the, that was the start of it. You first started training with Aberdeen, um, and the reason I ask this question is because when I was training with Aberdeen, I didn't have the maturity to understand, and I yes. think that was one of my issues. So did you have the maturity to understand what was needed to become a pro player? No. Okay. 
I I don't think I don't think I got the maturity until I was maybe away from Aberdeen. Oh really? Uh, I, I I think I had the maturity to actually knuckle down and, and get on with things, and that 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 that's essentially got me. You know, the twenty year career that I had was just work. I was I was an okay footballer. Um, I wasn't like an Ian Jess or a Scott Booth who had the kind of talents that they had. I had my own talent, but majority of the time it was just hard work. But the maturity to actually understand and and knuckle down and and, and do it at an early age. Um, I maybe had more than more than others, but. Mm. Um, I think to understand the position you were in at the time, no, I, yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah. I was I was playing a boyhood club um, that I supported every week and went with my dad and his mates to to the south stand and you know my mum and dad were in Gothenburg and stuff like that. So it was you were just. It was mind blowing. You just basically played for the team that you loved, and mm, mm. I was. But yeah, um, but it definitely didn't didn't understand it fully until you were at you know maybe another couple of years yeah. into the first team and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. When you signed your S form, or when you were sort of it looked like you were making the grade, did you ever speak to anybody senior? Did you ever ask for advice? No, I think I was too shy. Uh, I think the likes of Drew Jarvey and, and Neil Cooper did did well enough in part in kind of their knowledge. Us, um, like everybody else, and I'm sure you've you've you've, you've talked to to most people. The, the go to person was always Teddy Scott. Yeah, always. Um. And he was, he was a big kind of influence. Whenever anything went wrong, you could go and stand with him while he was doing, holding all the, the shirts and stuff like that. And you would just go and speak to him and just have a chat with him. Um, I think because you always wanted that little bit of detachment from speaking to the coaches because you didn't know what the coaches would react like. So, um, yeah. Senior players as well. When I, when I, whenever you went to to train with them, so you you know they would maybe pick two players to then go and, and train with them. Um, they would be quick to <laughs> to to let you know if you were doing stuff wrong. Um, and then folk folk like um, Ryan Grant, Billy Dodds. Uh, Jesse, you know, players like that when you first start getting into the first team, there was always, you know, you could always have a chat to them. Um, but I don't think I, I actually went away and, and seek their help. Um, I just kind of got on with it and, and did. And it, it look, looking back on it, you, you maybe should have. You should mm. have asked more questions. Yeah, hindsight is It's always hindsight. difficult. But yeah, exactly. And and you're in a dressing room with the people that you've idolised for mm. years. Mm. Stuart McKinney, um, Alex McLeish. Um, when I first started training with Aberdeen, I was training with Hans Hillhaus, remembering his kind of overhead kick, his debut, and you're like, Jesus Christ, I'm... Yeah. You know, so it was strange, surreal. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, I, I think you needed you needed to be a bit more ballsy and, and ask questions. But mm. yeah, it's you say hindsight's a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. Can you recall the time when you were asked to step up and train with the first team? I, I can't remember the exact time, but I just remember it probably wasn't in. And until into my second year of a YTS, you know, you started getting involved with them. 
um, you were maybe on the fringe of the reserves. You were playing with players like Duncan Shearer in the reserves, John Ingles, mm. and even the likes of Paul, Paul Kane and, and, and people like that. Um, they were maybe on their way out of Aberdeen at the time and you were training with them and playing with them. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't remember the exact time, but it was probably into my second year of YTS. Um, and, and, yeah, you were doing okay with the youth team and the reserves and you know, you're getting a wee bit more involved. Um, so it was good. Can I ask you about the, the YTS? So yep. I, remember, I remember that because I went on a YTS when I first left school as well. But thankfully, I was only on it for a couple of months before I actually... The, the company took me on full time. So, is it my understanding that you had to you had to fill out forms, you had to do some sort of education? I think when I left school, I was getting thirty five quid a week on a YTS. Was that was that roughly the same at the football club? Yeah. So when I f- when I first went into the YTS, so it, I think it was something like every Friday we had to go into the class, but yeah. it. it just underneath the Dick Donald. Yeah. Uh, we go into a room there. Um, <laughs> it was a kind of tick box exercise, just turn up. The guy would stand up and, and teach you stuff about maybe fitness or something like that. Um, I think it was a way of Aberdeen getting a bit of funding, you know, for your, for your basically your wages. And mm-hmm. I think it was on I think it was 75 quid a week okay at that time um, and then it, it went up to the second year it went up to 120 quid um, <laughs> it's mad isn't it <laughs> no. listen it's 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 good money for you know you're staying at home <laughs> yeah doing that, catching the bus a couple of times from Craigie Buckler and that was that was you because yeah. I remember I got my expenses paid when I was on YTS did you get your expenses paid no, because we were Aberdeen based. Okay. Um, okay. It was it was really the likes of the ones coming up from Glasgow and staying in Diggs so we'd get that yeah. train paid for, I think. Okay, cool. Um as a teenager, and I think I'm correct in saying you were still a teenager, how did you personally cope with the change of manager from Willie Miller to Roy Aiken? Did it affect you in any way? No, not. not. <laughs> Not massively. Um, I was disappointed be, be, because I think Willie liked me at the time. Um, I remember him coming in, so we were all under in, in our changing rooms. So it was just down from the um, away changing rooms. We were in a little room. And I remember him coming in and saying, look, that's me away, lads. Don't worry, everything's going to be all right for you. And so, you know, big respect for him to do that. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think at that point, we didn't have as much contact as you would have if you were in with the first team. Um, it was disappointing, definitely. But I think, like anything, we, we just had to get on with it. Um, yeah. And it was a bit of a, I suppose, a bit of a transition to to the next manager. Um, sure. So, yeah, I think it, it was very much a case of, right, well, get on with it. We've still, still got football to play. We've still got this to do. So, yeah. Okay. Can you remember the mood around the place at the time when Willie left? I think, like, any time um, anytime a manager leaves... No, you, you you do feel it. There's mm. you know a couple of days, maybe weeks, and, and well, what's going to happen? Um, it, it, and, and I think the stature that Willie had and still does is a, a legend of Aberdeen. You know, it was a it was a shock at the time. They weren't doing you know Aberdeen weren't doing that well you understood why it, it 
happen, but yeah, it's it's still a shock for a big legend like that to, to actually get sacked. Mm -hmm. um, but the the mood around the place, like with any manager leaving, um, first of all, there's the shock. Then there's like the realization that somebody else is going to come in. Who's going to come in? Who's going to take over the team? Am I still going to be playing? You know, your kind of thoughts move from them to to what you being selfish. Um, mm -hmm. You think about right. Well, what does that mean for me? It's unfortunately at, 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 at my time at Aberdeen, there was a lot of it happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you think in five years of, of first team, I had something like four or five changes, what with three permanent and two interim. Yeah. Yeah. Mental. Yeah. We'll come to that a wee bit later. Um, yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's fast forward a year because you made your debut against Kilmarnock yes. on the second of March '96. Um, it was a three 0 yeah. win against Kilmarnock, and you and Jamie Buchan both made your debuts that day. Um, so, yeah. was there a case of sort of encouraging each other? Was a, a did you kind of support each other? Was it comforting knowing that you had a guy who was in the same boat as you? Yeah, I mean, I, I I'd known Jamie since I was eleven. Um, I started at D side with him. Um, and yeah, we've always had that encouragement. Who's got to get in first, or is it going to be what are you got to do? What are you gonna, you know? So it's there's always that challenge. Um, and it was good that we did make our debuts together. Um, and I remember the remember the game vaguely, um, but I remember we were shooting. From the Dick Doll towards the beach end, uh, sorry, not the beach end to Merkland Road. Mm. Um, and I remember doing a, an overlap. I was playing centre midfield and I did an overlap of, I think it was Joe Miller. I remember getting praised for doing that and I was like, brilliant. I just did a run and that was it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 it was brilliant, surreal again. Yeah. Debut. Yeah. I remember it being a pretty bumpy pitch at the time as well. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because you came on for Stephen Glass. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So it was it, it was good. Um, proud moment for my mum and dad as well. Were they there? But, yeah, yeah, of course. Fantastic. My mum and dad, my mum and dad followed me. They're nuts, absolutely nuts. They, I made my Scotland under twenty one debut in um, Estonia and Latvia. Really? Yeah. They were there. Yeah. Brilliant. Just remember them turning up at up the at the hotel, and I was I got got called down by Tommy Craig, mm. who's the and under twenty one boss at the time. Said your mum and dad's here. I was like, oh no. So yeah, went down to the hotel for you and sat with them for about half an hour and then they watched the game. Um I think it was Lithuania. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, it was, it, I can look it, it, it was one of them. Yeah. Um and I don't think they came to Estonia because Estonia was the game where it was never was. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Game. Um, so yeah, um, brilliant. Superb. Um, I worked out that from that game until the end of the season, you were involved in every game. So how important was that for your development? And possibly more importantly, how was it for your confidence? M massive. Um, you still don't. You still never really thought you'd kind of made it. Mm. Uh, so it's but. Just to get the end of that season, um, well, the one thing was I made my debut for that nine, ten minutes, whatever it was at the end of the Kamarnock game, and then I was playing, I started the next game, Rith Rovers, away. 
And I think that was the biggest boost as well because I made that step. And not only had I made that step, instead of being another sub, I started. Mm. Uh, so it was it was it was massive. And then of course Jamie came on and he scored one of the goals. It was to, to equalise, and then yeah, it was it was good for him as well. Mm. I guess when you go away for the summer and then you come back for pre-season, I'm kind of guessing that it's it's it makes you step up a little bit, knowing that you've had a taste of it and you want more. So how was yeah. that sort of real first pre-season under Roy for you? It was a it was a big change because um, again towards the end of that season that my first little stint in the first team um, you were still in the reserve team and changing room oh, you were right. still, yeah you were still you know still classed as you're still reserved but you're coming in yeah so that was strange and then the next season you were actually in the first team changing room changing with the first team so yeah it was a it was a big change, more responsibility, more pressure on you to, you know, to do well. Okay. So who called you into the first team dressing room? Were you, did you know that you were going to go into the first team dressing room when you turned up for pre-season? Um, I can't remember. I think it could possibly have been Teddy Okay. that mentioned it. Okay. Uh, it's just a case of, right, you're in here now. Yeah. Yeah. But you're part of the first team squad. Yeah. Um, okay. a did you lot have, of did, did you have your own did you have your own peg? You you, you sat in, in in an area, it's not like it is now where they've got yeah. yeah. kind of um nicely penned out. Um yeah, you had an area. Um if you sat in one area, you quickly you got moved if it was like Stuart McKimmy's peg yeah. or so I thought <laughs> beat it. <laughs> so yeah, you you I think I was sitting beside Stuart McKimmy um, at the time, and possibly Brian Grant uh, when I first moved into the into the changing room. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All right. For season 96-97, that's when you really start to establish yourself in the first team. But for the second half of that season, we only won two games. What do you think went wrong? No idea, because I, I, I just remember, I remember we went to Tyne Castle. Um, I think it was pre-Christmas. And we were flying. Um, I think we beat Hearts at Tyne Castle. I don't remember thinking, I think we moved up to second in the league. And I thought, this is amazing. And then it just, I don't know whether it was the Christmas period or, or, or what it was. I still think it was early, early days for the style of football that they were wanting to play. Tommy Craig was still trying to do this pressing game. Um, I think Ian, Ian Jess was the trigger. You know, if, if, if he was playing up top, they would try and, pretty much like what, what they try and do, they, they try and pen you in an area and then Ian was the trigger and everybody worked off of him. Um, and it maybe just, we didn't have the personnel to do that. Um, it's 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 nuts how how some sometimes things just don't happen. Um, I think possibly at the time there may have been um, grumblings in the changing room. You know, some players that maybe weren't getting involved um, or wanted to leave and stuff like that. So I, I don't think that thing kind of helps. Mm. Um, but it's difficult to pinpoint at that time why we suddenly went from second in the table to, to then struggling towards yeah. the end of the season. Yeah, because the struggles obviously carried on. Um, yeah. so, so why do you think Roy was sacked? 
Um, I think you would you would have to ask, you know, the powers that be why, but I just think ultimately. Um, Could you sense it coming? You can always sense. Yeah. yeah. You can always sense when a manager's on a sugarly, sugarly peg. Mm. And that's, you know, pretty much circulates around that, right, well, maybe this, you know, maybe, maybe the manager isn't the one for the club. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a strange type of feeling because I think the players were, they do try. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think it it happened. Um, I think it's probably a similar situation to what's happening at Man U at the moment. Well, you know, I'm not kind of comparing Aberdeen at that time to a, a Man U, but I'm, I'm speaking about the, the the situation where they find themselves. They've had Alex Ferguson, and then they're trying. It's just yeah. pretty much. Yes. Similar to they're trying to find that winning way again and it has probably been a noose around Aberdeen's neck for a while Alex Ferguson was such a, an important person for, for Aberdeen and when he left he left a massive hole yeah. absolutely and it's taken them a while to get back in a, uh, you know, a proper footing and a consistency mm. I think Derek McInnes did a good job getting the first trophy, you know, for a while. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's difficult to pinpoint one situation. I think it just culminates um, in bad performances. Things not get, you know, you don't get the rub of the green. Um, it's it's you know, a number of, number of things. Yeah. Maybe... Oh, just didn't buy into the training. I don't know. Okay. How did you find Alex Miller? Difficult. <laughs> he was a difficult, difficult character. He was pretty intense. Mm. Um, I didn't have a good kind of... Um, I remember going to Hibs. I think he had a go at me then. About, you know, stuff like... Um, you, know, you can't trap a bag of sand or something like that. You know, I, I don't think he said it to me personally. He just said it out in the chamber. Oh, we've got players that can't even trap a bag of sand and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I, I just worked hard. I think his knowledge is good. It's, you know, he's worked for Liverpool. He's, but he's a pretty intense character. Um, Knows a knows a lot of stuff, but I just don't think he was the right character for the for Aberdeen at the time. Was it a difficult decision to go on loan? Uh, no, not okay. at the time. Okay. Um, at the time, I just needed to get out and play. Okay. I've been so at that point in time. I think it was just before. Um. So when Alec Miller got the sack and Paul Hegarty took over, I'd been playing. Um, so I always, always remember me and Dennis Wynas. So going back a few years, we ended up playing something like 85 games each in one season through youth team reserves, and we were playing for, for Stony Wood juniors as well. So we ended up playing a lot of games and there was a lot of, uh, I probably started getting a few injuries. Okay. Uh, so Al and Miller got the sack. Um, Heggy took over um, at Christmas. We beat Hearts 1-0. I scored. Um, and from then on, I, for a few few months after that, I started getting groin issues, and 
the kind of diagnosis was an inflamed pelvis. Okay. Called it osteitis pubis. And right. yeah. I had a, a set to head, I, you know, I couldn't couldn't go on, I couldn't play anymore because I, I was just in so much pain. And um, I think I missed maybe the last two months or something of, of that season. And then that culminated with him leaving Aberdeen and Ebscove now coming in. And when I returned for pre-season, I was still feeling it. And I think it took me about four or five months from the end of that season to, to try and get back to fitness. And by that time, he'd, he'd had a, a set team, you know, a set way, and, and he was happy with the way that they were playing. So I was playing reserves and stuff like that. So um, at that time, I, just, I needed to get out and, and get back playing and try and get back into the first team. And that was my only reason. And it was it was difficult because that was the first time I'd probably left home. Yeah. Or left Aberdeen. Yeah. Yeah. Hell for a month in Livingston. So yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, it did worked out well mm. yeah. yeah well that's interesting because I wanted to know how the process works of sort of keeping in touch with Aberdeen how they monitor your progress and all that sort of stuff is there a is there a mechanism for that um, they I, I think they just um, I, I don't know the mechanism that they had at the time but I, I, I think they just got regular reports back from okay. Jim Leishman and um, uh, oh god, what's his name? Celtic, the Celtic manager, Davy Hay. Davy Hay. Yeah. Um, and then I think they had somebody we, we played Morton one game. I think they had somebody watching at that point in time. So they would they, they they did have their feelers out. Um, but I think the majority of the time it would have been reporting back by Jim Leishman and, and Davy Hay. Okay. So when when Ebb was named as manager, did he ever have any sort of one-to-one chats with you? Did he ever pull you into the office to discuss what was going on with you? Yeah, I, had, I mean, I had a, you know, you were regularly smoked out by him uh, <laughs> in, in, the, in his office. Um, I remember sitting in, and having the chat with him. And I don't remember the exact words, but we just came to an agreement that, yeah, it's probably best we go out. Okay. He was pretty much true to his, his, his words. Um, he, he said, look, just go out, and, go out and play, basically. We'll see what happens. And if you're doing well, then, yeah, it's, it's always open. Mm. Yeah back and playing in the, in the first team which yeah well it proved so didn't it because you got back for the last five league games of that 99-2000 season so how significant was that yeah I mean it was just completely nuts was uh, it the blue? Um, I, yeah um, I came back and I and, uh, just basically hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, I think my first game back was Kilmarnock. But yeah, I remember the I remember the Kilmarnock game because I scored an absolute screamer that's yeah. on David Seaman's um bloopers. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hit a shot from about 30 yards that Probably would, was never going to reach the goal, but it just ended up trundling through um, Gordon Marshall's legs and, and into the back of the net. Mm-hmm. I played played a big diagonal pass for Isham Zero Ali. Um, yeah. He scored off of that, so I, I did all right that game. Can't remember the other ones. Okay. So, 
when did you find out you were going to be playing for the Scottish Cup final? Um, again, it's vague, but I think I, I remember we went to we went to a hotel in Glasgow, mm-hmm. um, and I was rooming with Mark Perry. Okay. Um, and I remember we went down for a team meeting, and we got we got told then got told the team, and I remember going back up to the room, and I was a bit apologetic to to Mark Perry because he wasn't in the he wasn't in the team, but he he'd been playing, you know the 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 last few games of the season and played pretty much the whole season, and I felt. I felt apologetic to him, um, but then he was he was brilliant. He was Fred was, you know, really. Fred. He's honestly, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, really nice guy. He got on well with him, and um, but he was like he was fine. He was just look go and play, okay. um, and it was yeah. So how? It, it, how- so do, do you go from thinking I'm not going to be involved here to all of a sudden, shit, I'm playing? So how do you mentally go about sort of switching to that, to that game preparation? It's, um, Was it just instinct? Yeah, I think once you're on the pitch, it's... Yeah. The build-up is always the worst. It was my first... You know, yeah. It was the only final. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the build up to it, you, you you're you're nervous, you get in the bus, you go under the yeah. you know, under the stadium uh, when the changing rooms and you it's just it's it's crazy. Um and I remember doing doing a warm up, there's like an indoor warm up area. Yeah. Um, remember being in there battling balls about and then getting out onto the pitch and, and, and doing the warm-up but once you're on the pitch and you're focused mm. all right the final itself was just gone after the first four minutes sure um, did that affect you? I think it affected everybody yeah not not having a keeper on the bench yeah um, but again when you think about Today's football and the amount of subs that you've got, it was, I think it was crazy that you had three subs at that. It just felt as well. So I'd started off in midfield. Um, Jim, Jim broke his, broke his jaw. Yeah. Then Russell did his knee. That's right. Just before their goal. Yeah. And then I had to move to right back. That's right. Uh, yeah. It was just a very, very weird day all round, to be honest. Um, and not only that, um, after the game, me and Harold Stavron got picked for uh, drug testing. Oh, did you? So me and him are tanking beers, trying to make ourselves pee okay. after the we're there for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and the bus is waiting for us to go back up to Aberdeen. Oh, God. Yeah, it is mental. Absolutely crazy. But listen, it's, it's, it's all kind of, it's things that you, you'll never, ever kind of encounter again, I think. So, yeah. So. Okay, tell us, so tell us what you're doing now. At the moment, uh, financial advising, um, it's something that I started when I actually left Aberdeen and, and went to Stoke. I started a, a college course there. I never finished it because my time there was only a year and a half at Stoke. Um, but then when I came back up in 2007 and played for Park Thistle, um, I was in a flat by myself because my wife was up in Aberdeen. We had a house that we couldn't sell at the time and she was pregnant with um, my daughter. Okay. 
So she went up to live in Aberdeen, my parents and my gran as well at the time. And um, I just blitzed, blitzed all the exams at that time. And then towards the end of my thistle career, I went kind of semi, semi part time. I was still training full days, but I would go away in the afternoon and on the day off, I would go into, into work as well. And then when I played with Stennis Muir, I started doing it um, full time and then part time football. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been ongoing for a number of years. So are you working for yourself or you're working for a company? No, working for a company um, okay. called Wiseswood Associates in okay. Glasgow. Um, and that's me being there for nearly four years now. Right. So, Happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's um, again, it's it's not football, but it's a mm. year moving forward. So um, nothing re- replicates the football side of it. Sure, sure. Okay, last question. If you could turn back the clock and change anything from your time with Aberdeen, what would you like to change? I suppose the questions at the start. Um, being a little less shy and and having a little bit more drive right at the start, it being wanting to be better than what I was. It wasn't until maybe, um, you know, later on when I when I started um, when I went down to Stoke and realised how much different it was. It's, it's Scottish football's in its own little bubble, mm. especially at that time. Um, and you kind of get shielded from the fact of, right, well, you move away and it's a whole different ball game to, you know, you're travelling all over the country in England. Some trips are three, four hours away and um, squads are bigger, you know, more teams. So, yeah, it's, it's probably just having that little bit of extra drive to, to, to push yourself as much as you can. I was a hard worker, but um, I was maybe working at the wrong things other than trying to get a little bit more technical and I would work at the running and I would always be the fittest, me and Darren and, you know, we would we'd always be up the front at the running, stuff like that. But that maybe wasn't the thing that we should have been working on, the passing, the touch, you know, things like that. So, yeah, just a little bit more clinical with, with what you had to work on. Okay. If you enjoyed today's watch with David, can you do me a small favour, please? I'd be very grateful if you would consider clicking on that little red subscribe button. Now, the reason that I ask that is quite simple. We are building here on the channel and it's getting rather exciting. And for me to be able to bring you the type of content that I want to bring you, we obviously need to get those subscription levels up. So please come along, enjoy the fun. We've got so much planned, particularly for 2023. And I, of course, would be hugely grateful. So I really hope you enjoy today's watch with David. Keep an eye out on my social media channels for another edition of The Vault before the weekend's game against Celtic. And I will hopefully see you again very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.